Hello everyone and welcome to another super science video with the Mass Mountain Regional Library. I'm Ms. Stephanie, one of the children's librarians here, and to start off 2023, I thought that it would be a great idea to study simple machines. And simple machines are, are devices that require few moving parts, and what they do is they make it easier for us to move objects because we have to use less energy to move them. And there are six different types. I'm just going to briefly show you what they are. The inclined plane, the wedge, the lever, the wheel and axle, the screw, and the pulley. Now, for this month, we are going to do the inclined plane. And the inclined plane is a flat sloped surface at an angle where we can make it easier to move objects over a distance. And the most famous type of inclined plane is a ramp. And a ramp connects two separate levels, like a ramp between a truck and like boxes that are on the ground and the person takes the boxes and moves them up the ramp to the truck and it's easier than just taking the boxes and moving them up themselves. And to create our ramp for, it's gonna be the main player of this experiment, you're gonna need a few things around your house. You'll need some yarn, a piece of cardboard that you can cut from a box or get your adult to help you with that, some large books, a plastic cup, a hole puncher, some type of toy that is a little heavy, like I am going to use a toy dinosaur for this experiment. Something to use to measure how how much it's going to take to get our toy up the ramp. So you can use something like pennies, marbles. You could use Legos, which are a little lighter, but if you do, make sure that all the pieces are the same size. And then this is optional, but it it helped me when I was doing that, some duct tape to make sure the ramp doesn't slip or fall. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's go ahead and start by creating our ramp or our inclined plane. And so I've stacked the books right here and I take my cardboard piece and we're gonna put it here and this will create the inclined plane. Now I'm using duct tape just to secure this a little better because I had when I was testing this out, my ramp kept slipping a bit. So I'm just going to tape it to the table real quick. And that will help. Okay, and then the next part is you'll take your plastic cup and your hole puncher and punch two holes on, on opposite sides. Take the yarn and tie it into a loop with a knot. You may get need an adult to help you with this. And then, however long your ramp is, make your yarn piece a bit longer than that, maybe about a foot longer. And then you'll take your toy, and I'm going to tie this on him, slip it on him, and then I'm going to actually tape that in place too because it fell off a couple of times when I was doing this. So, we're gonna put the dinosaur at the end of the ramp. And then the cup is gonna go over the side of a table like this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use marbles as the force or our work or the energy we would use to see how many of these it would take to get our dinosaur up the ramp. So let's, all right, so if you wanna count with me, let's get started. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, he's moving a little. Seven, eight, nine, oh, he's a little more. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 22, I wonder how many more it's gonna take. 23, oh, a little more. 24, 24, it took 24 marbles to get the dinosaur up the ramp. So this was kind of a shallow ramp though, it wasn't like the slope or the angle wasn't very steep. So we're gonna, we're gonna change things up a bit. So let me get this out, dump the marbles in here. 
And I'm gonna get these extra books that I have. Hold on one second, let me grab them, there we go. And we're gonna add it, and we're going to see how many marbles it takes to get the dinosaur up the steeper ramp. So let me tape this, make it a little extra secure. It's still doing good on the table. So I'll put my dinosaur at the end like I did before. Put drain this over on the side. So let's see how many it takes for this little guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Moving a little bit. Ten. 11, there we go, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, 21, 22. We're approaching how many it took for the last one. 23, 24, so it's gonna take a little bit more, 25. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. He's almost there. And 31, and there he is, all right. Oh, <laughs> knocked him over. So yeah, as you see, it took a, a significant amount more marbles to get it up the ramp because it required more force or work when the angle of the incline plane is steeper than when we just had like a few books to do the ramp on. And what I like about this is you can experiment, you can try different toys. Like I said, when the, we were going over what you needed to do this experiment, you could use Legos or just any other small object around your house is a measurement. You could play a guessing game with your friends or siblings, like guessing how much many marbles it would take to move, say an apple up the ramp. And I just hope you have fun experimenting with this incline plane ramp. Well, I hope you enjoyed doing that ramp experiment today. And just keep playing around with it and just like with the slope and the different things you use to move your toy up the ramp. And you can just have fun exploring this mach simple machine. And we'll be doing another experiment on an incline plane next month. Now, I have two books today that I'd like to share with you. This series actually was kind of the thing that started me getting thinking about simple machines and how it'd be a cool, some cool experiments to show you guys. And this is called Incline Planes by Louise Spillard. And like I said, she wrote an entire series on each simple machine. And this one focuses on the incline plane. It's easy to read. I like how it breaks down complicated scientific concepts that makes it easier for everyone to understand. And we learn about like how force and momentum and it, er, how it, we see incline planes in everyday life, like ski ramps, water slides. And for some of the more scientific words, I like how there's a glossary on the back which explains them in a clear way. And my favorite part is where she is breaking down how a skateboarder uses incline planes at a park to move. And I just like how she uses a lot of real life examples to explain incline planes. So that is that book. And then another example of an incline plane is a pyramid. And I thought that this book, 100 Things You Should Know About Pyramids by John Milam, would be a great example because a pyramid is a very large, very steep incline plane. And there's a lot of interesting facts in here about how pyramids originated, some things about them, how people built them, why people built them. And we may think of pyramids just in Egypt, but they're actually all over the world in Mexico, Central America, and even China. And the two most interesting facts that I found in here was that the, in the Egyptian pyramids, mud was used as the basis to build them. And you think like it would be something more solid like rock, but it was actually mud. And as you can see, the pyramids are still around. So it's a, actually a more sturdy material than I thought. And then also that pyramids were called ziggurats in ancient Mesopotamia, which is in the Middle East or modern day Iraq. And I like how the facts are divided in different topics. So you don't have to like just read the entire book, just what you want to learn about pyramids. If you just want to learn about the Egyptian pyramids, there's a section with the facts on that or just like how to build a pyramid, there's a section on that as well. So just like a great book for anyone who wants to learn more about pyramids. Thank you so much for joining me this month for our science experiment. I look forward to sharing more with you soon. Have a good day, bye.